Question, what is the best way to power a simple electronics project? Should be an easy answer, but actually it's not at all. There's so many different options. And in this video, I'm going to go through a few of my favorite ways to power projects. And that includes things like battery powered, USB power, and some other options when your requirements extend beyond the sort of typical three or five volts. So with that, let's make a start. So let's not overcomplicate this, right? So if all you're doing is you've got a microcontroller, be an Arduino, ESP32, Raspberry Pi, Pico, whatever, if you're just using a microcontroller and some simple low power sensors, so this is a temperature humidity sensor, or you just want to power some LEDs, or use the Wi-Fi, or low voltage, low power things, your best option is simply to use your USB. So here I've plugged my USB-C cable in on the V-in pin there, you'll get five volts. If I connected my five volt sensor to that pin, it will power that sensor. If I connect my LED to one of the outputs via a resistor, then I turn that out output high, I'll get the light to turn on. Simple projects requires a simple solution. But sometimes we don't have such a simple situation because you might not want just five or 3.3 volts. So in one of my previous videos, a recent one about PID control, go check it out. Um, I wanted to control this 12 volt heater. So basically you need to apply 12 volts between these two red wires and the heater gets hot. You simply can't do that with what you see here on the screen. There's, there's no 12 volts, so we need an option. So certainly one option to overcome that is to use a power delivery board. This basically communicates with USB-C to be able to set the voltage provided by your USB power bank. So when you plug that in, see it lights up again, you can measure the voltage and we see we're getting nine volts out of this um, power delivery board at the moment. The voltage is controllable by those three switches and if we flip it around we've got the little set of instructions that show you what you need. So if you want 5 volts, you have switch 1 on 1, switch 2 on 1, and switch 3 on 0. And if you want 20 volts, it's going to go 0, 1, 1. So really, really simple, really, really effective. So if we just take a look at this power delivery board on AliExpress, which is where I bought it from, you can see it's actually quite cheap. One piece for 62 pence allows you to change those voltages, um, compatible with a lot of standards. And I believe USB-C power delivery, even these older sort of um, standards can deliver up to 100 watts. I think the newer ones are even higher, maybe 200 plus. I'm not saying that this particular model, module can actually help you with that though. Um, so use with caution, but it's a really good deal and it's a convenient way to get more than five volts from USB without having to, you know, solder is solder this plug on and try and um, get the right resistors and all those kind of things. So it's very convenient, very cheap. However, in my last video, somebody asked, well, that's great. You've got 20 volts now, but how are you going to power your um, ESP32? That needs five volts. And that's a really good question. You would have to use a voltage regulator. So that could be something like this, which takes 20 volts input and it reduces it down to five volts. Although this is not very efficient and burns up a lot of power. Or we could use a little um, book converter, as you see on the screen right now, that allows you to efficiently change your 20 volts down to five volts. Alternatively, you don't even need to use this. You could actually connect onto the ESP32 and from the five volts from the USB, you could use something like this. So this is a boost converter. If I connect um, a DC voltage source to my input of it, so this could be from USB and turn it on. So on the input side, I've got DC power supply attached, which is giving five volts. So I just shot five volts. Let's have a look at the voltage on the output, 20 volts. And that voltage is controlled by changing the value or changing the position of that potentiometer. So looking at its specification, it's actually really good. It's super cheap, 82 pence. It can take in a voltage between 3 and 40 volts, and it can either step up or step down that voltage. So that's really good. It's not just a boost converter. It's actually a book boost. Book means step down. So you could put 30 volts in and get 10 volts out if you wanted. And boost means step up. So you could put 5 volts in and get 20 volts out, as you saw in the little example. So it's really flexible, and it can deliver up to 3 amps of current. So really 
really good price, really convenient. So this is certainly one good way to get higher voltages or higher currents from a given power source. So those are great if you want to um, power your project from a, um, a sort of a USB power supply. But how do you go about using a battery? So if you want to power your ESP32 or Arduino using a battery, how do you go about it? And one thing for sure is not many development boards can actually allow you to plug the battery directly into them so that's kind of out of the question perhaps the most widely used method is to use one of these little boards so this is actually a tp4056 um, battery charging module so basically it's got a usb port this is a usb micro so not very convenient it's got a b plus and a b minus terminal where you actually connect to your terminal of your batteries and it's got an out minus and an out plus so let's just plug this in and see what happens okay let's lift up which is a good start so I'm measuring the voltage, I'm just going to pin it to the USB port to keep the thing flat. And when I look on the output terminal, I can see 4.1 volts. And if this battery was connected, I would still see 4.1 volts even when I remove the USB power supply. This module is pretty good. It's got some short circuit protection. It controls the charging properly. It does a reasonable job, although if you read some forums online, they do have some criticisms about this device. Um, but I won't go into that here. For sort of little hobby projects like this, it's a good way of charging batteries. But I have to say, this 4.1 volts is a bit of a problem. So if you think about it, your ESP32 is looking for five volts and you could maybe put 3.3 volts into it. This gives you neither. So it doesn't give five, it doesn't give 3.3. So it's not very well compatible with um, microcontrollers, but they're really cheap. So looking on, on AliExpress, you can get five of them for 82 pence and they do do the job and loads of projects online are using them. We could actually just buy a microcontroller. So here's an ESP32, but it's on a Fire Beetle development board. So from DF Robot, these are really nice. And they actually have that battery controller circuit and everything you need already built in. So if I plug my battery in, my board turns on. Super simple. And it's, had, it's avoided all the need to use something like this and a boost circuit and all those other kind of things. So this board costs around £10 at the moment. So that's a bargain. But if you don't want to use the ESP32, what are your options? Well, one approach is to use this. It's an Adafruit Power Boost 1000 Cease. It's very similar to that. That TP4056 board but it includes a boost converter what that means is it, it still charges the battery so if I plug the battery in there it'll start charging and if I take away the USB power when the battery is connected it'll have an output voltage but the difference the main difference is if I you know I ground this and I bring my multimeter into view click on the five volt terminal you can see I've actually got five volts out now and that would be the case even if I had that battery connected so let's give that a try I'm going to remove the USB power I'm going to plug in my little battery so now I'm battery powered and check this out I've still got five volts there so now I could connect this five volt terminal where my red multimeter probe is onto my ESP32 or other microcontroller and it would be a complete battery powered solution. So that's a great way of doing it. And this is a really nice board, this um, PowerBoost 1000C, but it's hideously expensive, almost 20 pounds in the UK. I mean, it's a good product. There's a great um, support. There's a circuit diagram. There's all the specification you need when you plan your projects and things. But again, it's 20 pounds. Another option would be to use the TP4056 with a boost board. And that would allow you to get basically your five volts or any other voltage up to 40 volts, what you require. So that's a, a much lower cost solution than the power boost board um for pretty much similar functionality moving on so what i've seen recently is this little module here which is described a little bit confusingly on aliexpress as a 3.7 to 9 volts 5 volt 2 amp dc dc step up boost module so a real mouthful but what it basically does is 
it allows you to charge a battery to 3.7 volts. So that's the, the basically the voltage that these um, lithium ion batteries should be charged up. You see it says 3.7 volts. Actually charges a bit higher than that. I assume it takes care of that. Um, so you can connect your battery to those two terminals. It takes a USB input, which I assume is what the title refers to when it says 5 volts, 2 amps maybe. It gives you an output voltage between these two pins, plus and minus, of anywhere between 5 and 9 volts. So if you change that potentiometer, you actually get a different output between those two terminals. That sounds really cool. That basically sounds like it does almost the same job as this power boost board, but for um, 64 pence rather than um, 20 pounds. So you can see there's a massive difference there. The one thing I would say, so if you look at the screen, you can see, um, you know, there's 800 plus sold. It's got 4.9 out of 5 feedback, so really exceptional. But one thing I've unfortunately not managed to get this working so when i plug it in basically it looks like nothing happens and there's no voltage on it i've checked it what i don't know is that maybe you need to connect the battery for it to work i could guess that has been needed blame user error for it not working they're likely to work and i'm going to do a follow-up video really soon on exploring this module in a bit more depth so i just thought i'd show you this even though it doesn't work at the minute or it doesn't appear to work because it's really useful you can change that potentiometer value and get any voltage out between five and 9 volts so really versatile little module and the last thing i'll show you before i try and put all this information together is this boost converter so i've already spoken about this book boost converter so you you put a voltage in and you can either get higher or lower out um this doesn't operate in the same way. This just allows you to generate a higher voltage. So you might be wondering what the point of that is, but actually this allows you to generate really quite high voltages. Here's the input side, can take up to 40 volts, I believe. And here is your output. That voltage can go almost 400 volts. I think it's 390 volts at 200 milliamp. That is quite a lot of voltage DC. It certainly give you a very bad shock, maybe even a fatal shock. So you've got to be extremely careful but if you do have an application where you need say 100 volts 200 volts this is really what you need so you can change the voltage by moving that potentiometer but if you do use this use it with real caution so I've showed you some of the options I've used in the past and some things I'm probably going to try in the future. Let's just wrap all that up and I'll give you some of my opinions on what are the best things to use in a given application. So just to wrap all this together, before actually trying to build or design anything, I'd ask some key questions about my project. Firstly, am I going to be using my power source to power something that's high powered, like a motor or something like that, or something that doesn't take very much power, like an LED? So that really dictates what power supply, what source you're going to use in the first place. Another key question is, are you going to use more than one voltage? So what I mean by that is if you take your Arduino, it's a five volt device. That means there's, there's loads of options to take five volts from this board and use it to, I don't know, power a sensor, for example. But if I needed to power a 12 volt device, I wouldn't be able to do it directly from this board. I would need some other electronics. So that's another key question. Is there more than one voltage required on your board? So once I thought about those questions, I'd look at my options and I'd ask, you know, do I need a battery power? Is this going to be mobile? like a little robot or is it gonna you know sit out in my garden measuring, measuring the temperature for days and days if so it's probably going to need to be a battery powered application whereas if it's just a, a one-off project or something i'm going to run on my desk right in front of me i could use ac power so i could use like a usb adapter or i could use a dc power supply so let's take the battery as an example well if you're using a battery you're going to need to charge that battery and also the typical batteries you'd use in these small projects these lithium ion or lithium from polymer and they're 3.7 volt batteries so they can't directly power a 5 volt microcontroller so if we look at those options we see the adafruit power boost so that's really good so you plug your 3.7 volt battery in it charges and it also gives you a 5 volt out so you can power your 5 volt projects perfect it's well made and if you go onto the adafruit website there's loads of documentation the downside is that it's super expensive almost 20 pounds so that's really really dear when you compare to some of the cheaper options you see on aliexpress so one of those options is this generic tp4056 module so it 
charges your battery from USB, but it doesn't give you five volts out. It only gives you around four volts. Now that's a bit of a problem. Four volts is too high for a 3.3 volt microcontroller. So you need a regulator and it's too low for a five volt microcontroller. So you still need some kind of boost circuit to, to increase that voltage if you wanted to power a five volt circuit like this. And the final board we looked at is this sort of generic charging and boost board. On paper, this board looks really, really cool. So it does everything the Adafruit board does basically. It's even a little bit more flexible because it allows you to generate up to nine volts. I mean, it looks great on paper, but as you saw, it didn't actually work. Now that could easily be because I didn't have a battery connected or things like that. So I'm blaming user error for now. So I'm going to do another video on that looking in a bit more detail, but this could be a really exciting option for projects. So let's think about some of the other options. So we have these cheap power delivery boards and I've used them before and they work really well. Certainly you need 20 volts at 100 watts, something like that. This is a good option from USB-C. The downside, and somebody mentioned this in a previous video, is that once you plug your USB-C in here and it's, you've configured it to generate 20 volts, there is no 5 volts, there is no 3.3 volts to power your microcontroller. So again, you might need some other kind of regulator to power those lower voltage devices. So moving on, we looked at two different book boost converters or one book boost and one boost converter. So we saw that the lower voltage version is actually a book boost, meaning it can generate higher or lower voltages than what you put into it. It looks pretty good. It can generate up to 440 volts at three amps, but that's the maximum. And the, and the data sheet actually says, suggests don't go higher than 2.5 amps, um, or it causes overheating. Um, again, it's really, really low cost. So that's a really good option. And that's not just for use with batteries. It could be used with your USB-C. You could use a 12 volt battery to get a three volts out. You know, you can do lots of useful things with that device. And the one at the bottom of the slide is really this um, high voltage um, boost converter. So this only generates voltages higher than what you put into it. So if you put 12 volts in, you can generate voltages higher than 12. You'll never get um, say five volts from a 12 volt input because it isn't a book boost. Essentially book means a step down boost means a step up. Again, it's a versatile and really cheap board. Um, not many applications requiring such high voltages though, but it is an option, but it is dangerous. So if you don't really know what you're doing, don't start generating 390 volts at um, DC. It can be really dangerous. So really that's a very brief overview and there's loads more considerations. Just one to think about if you're running a mobile application, you know, you really want to save every every watt of power. Um, you don't want to be using linear regulators and things like this. So the more you look into it, the more complex the situation becomes. But I hope this video has given you a, a sort of a brief overview of many of the options out there. There are certainly more and I'd be really interested if you put your what you use in the comments and what you think is good and what you think is bad. And any other options I've missed would also be really helpful. So with that, thanks for watching. If you liked, please subscribe because it helps the channel. And of course, if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat. See you in the next one.